hello and welcome. Firstly, I'm proud to say that I can today unveil my channel logo. Done by the hand of Mr. Phil McDermott, owner and operator of Buried Antenna and Whipcage Customs, and a very good friend of mine. So, there it is, and I'm very pleased with it. But now, on with this week's episode of Why Are You Using That? This week, I'm bringing you the QBB95 from the support class. Now, I'm not normally a support player, so to prepare for this gun, I spent a lot of time playing with what are considered the best light machine guns, the PKP and the M240B. However, I soon learned that once I switched to the QBB, that it doesn't play like a traditional LMG. The damage model is pretty much the same as the assault rifle, with 25 damage within 8 meters, dropping up to 18.4 at 50. The rate of fire comes in at 650 rounds a minute, which is a decent fire speed and places the QBB at a mid card range for any LMG. The muzzle velocity though comes in at a whopping 670 meters a second, making it the fastest bullet speed of any weapon in the game, tied only with the AUG A3. You can rarely notice this when shooting at targets at range, as it's very easy to hit an enemy as long as you burst and control that recoil. Speaking of which, the QBB again comes in the mid car range for recoil, with a vertical recoil of 0.37 and a side to side of 0.3 left and 0.2 right. Couple that with the first shot recoil multiplier of times 2 it makes this one of the easiest support weapons to control. Burst fire is still needed at range, but if you have your attachments right, you can unload a much larger burst at close to mid range and still stay on target. I was using a foregrip and a flash suppressor here, and you can really notice the difference in that vertical recoil. I also tried the laser sight on this, as it's a bullpup style weapon, and my god was it wonderful. At close range, where most of the support guns would just spray bullets everywhere, the QBB for a support gun is a laser beam. The reloads for this weapon are quite good for the class, with a 3.8 second for the fast reload and a 4.5 for the slow. Obviously it's not as fast as the M27 or the L86A2, but the QBB does nearly have double the ammo capacity of those guns. The clip size for the QBB is 75 or 76 of the round chambers. This as far as I can see is the bridge weapon between the assault rifle style support guns like the M27 or the RPK with their standard magazine clips or, and the ammo box belt fed monsters like the PKP. So quite surprisingly, to me anyway, the QBB looks like a damn good weapon. When I first started using this gun for the video, I had no attachments at all and the iron sights on this thing were awful, which really put me off this weapon at the start. I couldn't seem to hit anything or see anything for that matter, but once I unlocked the sight for the QBB, it really came into its own. I could track and hit targets very easily and it's all down to that brilliant muzzle speed. With a bipod, it can feel like a 75 round sniper rifle. I switched to a foregrip and flash suppressor for the close quarters maps and this weapon feels great. There wasn't a time where I thought, I'm not going to bother with that target as I'll never hit it. The QBB can hit and kill at all ranges if you treat it right. This took, totally took me by surprise as I really can't see why this weapon isn't used that much. When I was using the laser sight, I knew I could hip fire and see results. If I'm ever going to use a support gun in close quarters, or if I know I'm going to be a consistent long range in the future, I'll be choosing the QBB95 and just switching up the att attachments for the correct situation. I'm really stumped for things to say this week. The QBB is a good gun. Try it, love it, win with it. Thanks for watching guys, if you could please check out those links there, I'd be very grateful. They are to Phil McDermott's artwork portfolio and his store. And also, in some Battlefield related news, DICE and EA have announced that the Battlefield 4 multiplayer will be revealed at E3, so there's a link to the Facebook event there also. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. I'm hoping for more than just gameplay and modes, I want to see new weapon and soldier customization. A system similar to Warfighter would be great, and I'm also hoping to see these rumoured naval battles. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll be back next week with another engineer gun, the AKS-74U. Thanks again for watching, I've been Cracked Fingers, and I'll see you next time.